That's right. You heard the title. In this video, we're going to be talking about the worst math majors. Most math majors are good, don't get me wrong, but some of them have been hijacked by useless degrees that trick you into thinking that they aren't. And that's why it's always important for you to make sure that you gently tap the like button on my videos and always do your research. But if you don't want to do that, then sit back, relax, and let me do the research for you. Number five on the list, we're going to start off right off the bat with a general math degree. Now this one ranks 135 out of 835 possible degrees on pay scale. And this says a lot about how good mathematics degrees are. And it also shows why this is a top five list instead of a top 10 list. Because I couldn't find 10 bad math degrees. Now honestly, the statistics on this one aren't that bad. They make $57,000 a year starting out and then $102,000 a year after 10 years, AKA the mid-career pay. Now the issue with this degree is it can sometimes be a little bit difficult for you to find a job at the very beginning. The reason for this is because mathematics degrees can be a little bit too abstract and general. Sometimes companies will have a hard time seeing how you can actually help them. But as you can see, mid-career pay is really good. So don't let that stop you if you're passionate about math. Math can still be a great skill to learn long term, especially if you pair it with something else that'll help you inflict critical damage. Think about minoring in business or maybe learning other skills or maybe even double majoring in something that'll supplement your math degree. That's basically the college degree version of a Vegeta and Goku fusion. Now don't get me wrong, this degree is not that bad. All I'm saying is sometimes you might have a difficult time getting a job initially. It's one of the five worst math degrees, but that's not saying much because there's really not that many bad math degrees. Number four on the list is going to be math and science, and this one is going to rank 396 out of 835. Now, this is another one that's not as good when you compare it to the other math-related degrees, but still, it's not that bad either. You'll make around $53,000 a year starting out, and mid-career pay is going to be $80,000 a year. Now, my theory on this one for why it's not as good is because I don't think math and science is that good of a combination. This is kind of like when Vegeta and Goku split up because they can't agree on anything. For some reason, those two skills put together just aren't that good with each other. But overall, it's not that bad. There's just a lot of other combinations out there that would be better. I think it's kind of because both of them are a little bit too abstract and they're hard to apply to the real world in some cases. But if you're going to put yourself through four years of math and science degrees, then you want to make sure that you're getting a good return on your investment. Number three on the list is going to be accounting and business. Now this one's gonna come in at 445 out of 835, so we have crossed the middle mark. That means that this one is on the bottom half of all of the degrees. Now some people might not like the fact that I included an accounting degree in the mathematics list. Technically accounting is an advanced mathematics or anything like that, I get it. However, you are going to be crunching numbers all day long. Now with this one, you can expect to earn $49,000 a year starting out, and mid-career pay is gonna be 78,000. Now accounting is already specific enough for a business degree. You don't really need to get any more specific than that. And I know it's not fair. On their own, these two are relatively good degrees, but when you combine them together, for some reason, they just don't pair very well. But life be like that sometimes. Another accounting degree, which is gonna be number two, is going to be forensic accounting. Now this is getting into the really, really bad degree territory. It's gonna be 625 out of 835 possible degrees. Now forensic accounting has to do with accounting in legal disputes and court. Again, this is a very specific skill set where there's probably not a lot of need for it. Many other types of accountants can do forensic accounting. However, forensic accountants can't necessarily do other types of accountants' jobs. So they kind of pigeonhole themselves by getting too specific. Now with this one, you can expect to make $44,000 a year starting out and $67,000 in mid-career pay. Number one on the list is going to be mathematics teacher education. And the one I decided to choose specifically ranks 634, which is secondary and middle school mathematics teacher education. Now, this one's gonna come in at $42,000 a year starting out and $67,000 a year in mid-career pay. And if you get this degree, you can work as a high school teacher, of course, where you'll make around $61,000 a year. There's gonna be over 1 million jobs available and it's growing at 4%, which is average. However, here's the thing with this degree. Education degrees in general are not that good, unfortunately. I wish they were, but unfortunately they aren't. An education as a degree is already specific enough. If you go into education, you're probably doing it to become a teacher. So there's no need for you to get any more specific than that. When you get a secondary and middle school mathematics teacher education degree, that's extremely specific. 
you are pigeonholing yourself to a very small amount of jobs. I think it's a bad idea to do that. If you want to be a math teacher, just get an education degree and then maybe minor in something else or double major in mathematics. That way, if plans change later on, if for some reason you don't wanna teach math anymore, you wanna be a PE teacher or something like that, you can easily do it. Now, there's a few things in my research that I wanted to mention that apply specifically to math-related degrees. Number one, I think you should try to combine your math skills, which are somewhat obscure abstract and general with practical real world skills, especially when you're trying to get your first job. These skills would include something like business or marketing, something along those lines. And the reason for this is because when they're hiring someone right out of college, they know you're really smart because you have a math degree, but they don't know how you're actually gonna use that knowledge to help their business. So if you build skills that have to do with business or maybe even minor or double major in another business degree, you'll be able to explain to them much better how you're actually going to help them make money. And that's what business is all about. About. you have to make money in order to keep your business going number two I think you should really look into work experience such as internships or actual jobs when an employer sees that you have actual work experience, especially if it's in a field or an industry that's related to their company, that is gonna make them like you a lot. That shows them that you don't just have the theoretical skills, you also can apply that in a practical way. You also wanna learn valuable skills that have a lot of market demand. Now, the obvious one right now, of course, is any type of computer programming. If you can learn that on the side, that would be great. It looks great on a resume. So if you have that on your resume, the company is gonna know that you can help them out later on down the line. But depending on what career you're going into, these skills could be completely different. And it's your job from the very beginning, if you can, to research what you want to get good at. And the best way to do this is to actually talk to people who are in the careers that you're aiming for. Ask them what skills that you should be learning. Ask them what types of internships or job experience that you should be going for. Ask them who you should be networking with, etc., etc., etc. And that brings up point number three, which is networking and real world experience is key. I think this one's pretty obvious. I mean, everybody knows, oh, networking is important. As I get older, I realize more and more how important networking is. Like I knew that it was important in the beginning, but I'm starting to realize more and more that it's uh, it's even more important than I thought. This is coming from someone who's kind of an introvert. So, you know, in the past, I didn't really network all that much, but I'm kind of putting myself out there more. And you should too. Number four is math related degrees overall are really good. So if you're someone who's passionate about math and you're someone who's good at math, which hey, a lot of people aren't, let's be honest, you should go for a math related degree. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, there's slim chances that you're going to become a mathematician with just a mathematics degree. Unless you go for a master's or a doctorate, you're probably not gonna go down that route. So all the theoretical stuff like that, if that's what you're interested in, you're gonna have to go back to school, get your master's or your doctorate. A lot of mathematics majors end up going into technology. Some of them learn you know, different computer science skills. And that's fine because that shows that mathematics is kind of a universally respected degree. All right, so this was a short one. Make sure to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below. Don't forget to share it and never ever forget to check out my other videos right here i made them just for you 